Well, there's more musical chairs in the housing market. Do you have a seat when the music stops? All right, well, we are getting more data out on who is moving where. After the pandemic, people were worried, all right, everybody who moved to these second home communities, are they gonna be moving back into the big city? Are they not? Are they gonna stay there forever? What is the long-term impact for a lot of these second home, uh, vacation home communities, a lot of the suburbs, right? Uh, and we're starting to get some of that data coming back that people are actually moving back into the city. People want butts in seats. Those, those uh, high you know, driver type employers are saying, look, we want you back in the office. And right off the top, here's a headline talking about Manhattan rents hitting an all-time high in January. Uh, the, they hit a record fueled by a strong job market and a tight supply of apartments. Again, just like I'm talking about, it's musical chairs. There is still not enough housing, whether it's in big cities or the suburbs, we aren't building enough homes and smart money and big money know that. They're gobbling up everything they can and they're building uh, large apartment complexes. So what uh, one of the interesting article, uh, points of this article is median rents rose 15% to $4,100 a month uh, from the year earlier, right? Highest ever. So that's a median. That means half of the homes being rented in Manhattan are above 4,100 and half the units are below 4,100. So it's a pretty good, you know, kind of, you know, well, it's a median, right? So it's pretty good at tracking what direction things are heading. Um, but they're just talking about more workers are starting to return to the office. And as workers return, employees may also be moving back to the city. So they're they're moving back from the suburbs in uh, some of those those locations. Um, but what I also like to see was you know how is this really playing out? Because I don't think everybody's moving back. I think some people are like you know what I'll take a, a wage hit. I'll make less to be happier, to maybe not commute, to maybe not be in a heck hole of a city such as San Francisco or New York or something like that. They might have got a taste for the suburbs and like it a little bit more of a calm and peaceful life. Right. So this report just came out. Um, and this is on DS News, love this site. They've got great info. Uh, the share of employed adults who moved into a new residence within the past 12 months as of December of 2022. So 27% of employed adults were fully remote workers. So that means, hey, they're moving into a residence, probably not in the big city, right? They're moving into the second home community, maybe a nice, you know, uh, resort community where it used to just be part-time people living there. Uh, you know, it's what, you know, the population would swell in the summer or swell in the winter. Now they're getting a bigger population year round. You got a lot of people moving into those markets, driving up prices in those, those vacation communities and stuff like that, um, where there was pretty, predominantly before just second homes. Now they're becoming first time homes. So, so 27% uh, of buyers who moved within the last 12 months were fully remote workers. 31% um, were hybrid remote workers. So those are normally going to be maybe a little bit closer to their office, but they're going to have a long drive two days a week, maybe three days a week, right? So they're in the, the suburbs. Um, you know, for us here locally, the, we've got em, uh, employees that are working in LA that live in, in Inland Empire, right? I've got clients that moved to Idaho and they're firefighters and a doctor and they fly in from Idaho for their work days and then fly back and they just try and stagger their, um, their, their working days so that they can have some overlap uh, as well, but that there's always somebody at home for the kids because they feel their kids are getting a better education and have a better, you know, just um, climate to be raised in, in Idaho. So that's pretty interesting to me. That is one of the longer hybrid remote workers uh, cases I've seen. But you know, my cousin, she, she actually works in Boston. Um, she lives in Montana, so she'll fly to Boston because the majority of her work can, can be remote. Um, she's got a property now in Arizona Arizona, um, one in California. So, you know, some of those hybrid remote workers are really able to take advantage of low income tax in their home state and be able to invest that money smartly in other areas and then actually travel around uh, where they want to be, you know, when the weather's there, right? So, uh, 
it's pretty interesting to see 31 percent that is a huge amount that are hybrid remote workers and i think that's really the direction we're going to see a lot of of this go anybody who can work remote is probably going to want to be you know either remote or hybrid and as a combination that right there is 58 percent. so more than half of the buyers who bought properties and moved in the last 12 months are working remote in some way, shape, or form. And that's why we are seeing, you know, all of those communities, the Inland Empire in our area is just completely blowing up. It's had one of the highest amounts of uh, job creation in the nation uh, in the last year. So it's pretty interesting to see. Um, and then on-site workers, a measly 17%, but hey, it's enough to drive up those rent prices in Manhattan. Uh, so, if you guys are out there, you're on the fence whether or not to buy a house, I absolutely think as soon as you can afford something, get in. I think that a lot of people are waiting until rates come down and that's a huge mistake because by the time rates come down, the only people who are gonna be able to afford those properties are people who have a ton of cash and are able to come in and buy either cash anyways or put 50% down, 20% down or more and they're probably gonna be bidding wars again. We're already seeing multiple offers even with rates as high as they are right now, um, and affordability is, is, is rough for a lot of people, right? But we're seeing multiple offers on any properties that are good, you know, good neighborhoods, uh, you know, they're turnkey, ready to move in. Uh, and we're seeing solid offers, maybe not bidding wars or anything crazy like that on fixers as well, as long as they're priced right. So uh, the demand is out there. Uh, and I think the people that are that are approved for a home and waiting are making a big mistake. Uh, the game plan most of the buyers we're seeing right now is, hey, let me get into the home while there's a little bit less uh, people fighting for it. And then as maybe we hit this recession, some of the economists are, are you know, talking about, uh, we think that there's gonna be a good chance where rates dip and there is absolutely no competition on a refi, right? So their goal is to get in the house now when there's less competition and then refinance later into that lower rate. If they can't, they're happy knowing that they're comfortable with that fixed 30 year rate they've got. Uh, and they know rents are gonna be going up across the board. As you can see, the trend continues, right? So, um, so that's it. If you take one thing away from today's video, it's there is absolutely no competition on a refi, but when rates drop and you're out there as a buyer, there is absolutely fierce competition and you're just, you're hoping to get lucky, right? So the sooner you can get in, uh, on a home, time is your friend. If you have a long-term outlook on your home ownership, time is the best thing that you have going for yourself, right? You wanna get in early and hold on uh, all the way until you're in that dirt box, right? Um, sorry, just joking on that one. So uh, anyways, first time home buyer pickle, sparse inventory, high rates, looming recession. This comes from a local uh, newspaper at Orange County Register. That's exactly what we're seeing. Um, there is low inventory like we talked about, um, higher rates than we saw in the last you know, uh, couple years. And we've got this looming recession. This is good news for housing. A lot of people are worried about this looming recession. Now I get it if you are in a job that isn't recession proof. What is a recession proof job? Well, a lot of first responders, right? A lot of state, uh, county, city workers, nurses, doctors. There are certain um, industries where we just don't see layoffs. We don't see recession affecting those. If you're in a job that does historically well during a recession, I think that's a great time to get in with the sparse inventory while there's a little bit you know, fewer people uh, fighting for it and then Take that high rate, maybe be smart, get a, a rate buy down for the next two to three years, maybe do a five or seven year adjustable rate mortgage where that rate is in the fours or in the fives, right? And then figure, hey, you know what, if it pops back up to a higher rate later, we'll refinance. And if it pops lower, we're gonna refinance and take advantage and, and get into that 30 year fix. But no matter what you do, shop for your rate. Um, there, You wanna look at a mortgage broker, you wanna look at, um, credit unions, not all credit unions are alike. You need to probably look at five to 20 online and then see what they offer on their adjustable rate as, as well as their 30 year. And then when you're talking to a broker, I would ask them about some of their 40 year product products. There are some great 10 year interest only. So you're only paying the low interest amount. Um, and then at the end of 10 years, it turns into a normal 30 year loan, right? If for some reason the rates go up, hey, you know what, you're protected in that loan, but if rates go down, that's when you refinance. So there are some great, uh, great options out there for loans. 
Um, but really, majority of my buyers right now, they're reading the, the tea leaves, they're, they're following the economists that, that think that this looming recession is gonna happen, and if that happens, that's the time for them to refinance. And as long as they're not worried about job loss, they feel that they've got a great plan. So where are rates today? We are still hovering around that six and a quarter rate. Uh, 6.298 was yesterday's rate, really. Uh, we've seen it bouncing. I've got a lot of clients that are really getting in that 5.8, uh, 5875 uh, to six rate range on the 30 year fix. So again, you definitely wanna shop. If you've got any questions on where to look, please message us. We'd be more than happy to help you, point you in the right directions. But more than that, make sure you hit like and subscribe and turn your notifications on so you get notified when we go live, just like this. Uh, and thank you for joining us. I know you got a lot of uh, things you can be doing with your time and we appreciate you watching our real estate daily videos.